Hey there, Joe Braun here of the DCS Mech Warriors. In this video, we are going to set up an op mode with a distance sensor in it. And as a bonus, we're going to control a servo to move from one position to another when it sees something within a certain distance of our sensor. So let me go ahead and switch over to the screen and open up team code and go down to Java. And then inside YouTube, we have a uh, op mode called IMU, which is the video that we did yesterday, setting up our internal IMU. And what we're gonna do is continue layering on sensors inside this op mode. So I'm gonna right click on it and go to copy. And then I'm gonna go to YouTube and click paste. And then this is actually uh, version number two of the video. I named this distance sensor uh, because I've been naming the, the videos after the name of what we're using. Um, however, in the FTC uh, repository, there is a class called distance sensor. It caused all kinds of problems. So make sure that you don't use a class that's already named somewhere in the FTC, FTC structure. So I'm just gonna call this one dist sensor instead of distance sensor. Oh, and I mistyped that, so let me fix that. All right, and then push enter, and it's gonna create our class. There we go. Um, and then I'm gonna come down to new member training, which is my notes, and open up uh, that window or that class, drop that down to the bottom so we can see those top and bottom. And so now we have a copy of our IMU lesson that we created yesterday and we have our notes uh, for this particular lesson. So uh, the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and edit our configuration file um, note. Uh, Java doc is actually what it's called. So uh, what we wanna do is add our servo port. Uh, we're gonna use zero and we're gonna call the servo one. And then come down here below our IMU and put a I squared C on port uh, zero one, it looks like. And then we're gonna call that, uh, in this instance, we can go ahead, and, because we're using lower camel case, it won't get confused with the class name. So we can call this distance sensor and that should work out fine. Okay, so we've got our configuration file. Again, go on your robot and make sure you change that. That doesn't happen automatically because we notate it here. This is just for us to keep a track which port uh, we're putting everything on. Um, as I talked about in yesterday's video, some people call this I2C. I think the proper name is I squared C for that. Um, but uh, regardless, we should be able to move forward with that. So uh, you're disabled, you're gonna, um, we are in this classroom gonna leave that disabled, but if you're uploading it to a robot to test, make sure you comment that out. We are gonna leave this in teleop, so on the driver hub on the right hand side, and our group is still gonna be examples. Uh, below that we have our class name, which we already refactored when we copied it, and then our IMU variables. So what we wanna do is add some more variables. We're gonna go down uh, right below this and add those in, and I'm actually just gonna use copy and paste to do that. So copy and paste that in with control V. So uh, let me talk about the voltage issues that sometimes happen with distance sensors. Uh, so in our experience, as the battery starts to uh, lose its charge, we sometimes have problems with I squared C sensors. Um, the IMU doesn't seem to usually be a problem, but specifically with distance sensors, uh, if the battery drains uh, a little bit, we'll start to get that error sound. If you've heard it on the control hub, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it, it sometimes uh, doesn't work properly. It's, it'll start to lose connection as the power uh, drains on your battery. So if you're starting to hear that error, a lot of times um, that's what it is. So uh, let me go ahead and get rid of that comment um, and then get back to the variables. So we're setting this to private. We're calling in a class. And if this did it right, we should have an import now with our distance sensor, I'm trying to find it. There it is right there. Okay, so that should happen on the fly if you have your Android Studio set up correctly. And then we're naming it distance sensor. Uh, we're gonna have a target distance that we're gonna use to move a servo from one position to another using the distance sensor. So we'll come back to that. And then uh, in previous videos, we've talked about servos and how to set those up. 
So we have our initial position, we have position one and position two of those. So those are the variables that we're gonna use. Um, let me go ahead and drop down to the init phase. So we're gonna need to set up all of these pieces of hardware. So in this case, we have a servo one and a distance sensor we need to add, and we already have the IMU in place in yesterday's video. So what we're gonna do is keep those in the same order. So I'm gonna drop down here. We've got our method stack that will happen right here, but we'll come back to that. What we need to do is add in a method right here for our servo um, to keep those in the same order. So I'm looking for that in my notes here. So we're gonna drop this in. We won't go into a lot of great detail because we've talked about servos before, but this is our hardware map connecting our Java name to our configuration name um, inside the driver hub. Um, this is calling a class that's servo. We're setting it to rotate in the forward direction. We could do reverse if we wanted. And then our initial position, we're setting as uh, this variable up top. So I'm gonna hold down control and click on it. So our initial position is 50%, so halfway through its motion. Okay, so let me drop back down there. And um, so now we have our servo set up. Then we have our IMU, which we did in the previous video. And below this, we're gonna set up our distance sensor, which is only one line of code. Um, so we're gonna put that right here. So we're gonna init our distance sensor. Again, we're making our Java name connect to our configuration name using the hardware map. Um, and the class we're calling is distance sensor in this case. So with the distance sensor, you'll need one line of code for the setup. All right, so now what we need to do is add all of these things to our hardware map. So we're going to init our, um, let me find it, servo is what I'm looking for. I don't see it, probably because I have uh, multiple things on one line. So let me do this a little bit different. Let me put an enter there. So init, and then we'll just type servo one. Um, so you can push enter or tab, and then come down here and init our distance sensor, and then push tab to fill that out. So now we've taken our setup for our servo, our IMU, and our distance sensor, and we've put those in our uh, method stack up here in init hardware. And then that's being called in the very first thing in our run op mode, okay? So the next thing I wanna do for setup is actually talk about the telemetry. And so we're gonna drop down here to this method. Usually I have another inner there, so let me fix that. Um, so we're gonna copy this and come to the bottom with our telemetry put an enter here after this is the method bracket and this is the class bracket. So it has to be before the class bracket. I'm gonna paste that in um, and put an extra enter in there to make sure that I understand this is my class bracket. So in distance telemetry, uh, all we're doing is setting a caption or a, a label um, that we're gonna be, the user can tell, hey, this is in centimeters. Um, so sending the user a message because whoever's reading it might not be the coder and know that. So we've got a, a label there. Um, we're telling it to put it uh, in two decimals. Uh, and then uh, over here, we're telling when we get the data from the sensor itself, we're telling it to put it in centimeters. So you can um, set this to a lot of different things. Um, I think you can do inches. I think you can do millimeters. Um, I think you can do meters. I think meters is typed out. So there's a lot of different options there. So in this case, we're gonna use centimeters. Uh, and then again, we're telling the user that this is in centimeters. So um, I have a note here to make sure that you use uh, a ruler or a tape measure to test the accuracy of your sensor. So as a team, we have eight of these distance sensors and we compared, we just made this simple op mode and we compared those, um, we basically took one sensor and used it to measure um, the distance to an object and then compared all of the distance sensors to measure that exact same distance. Two of our sensors were off by two centimeters. Now, I mean, that might, across an entire field, that might not be a big deal, but if you're trying to do something for accuracy, we did have some uh, manufacturing issues, I guess, with two of our sensors, they were, they were off, considerably off compared to the other six that we have. Um, so make sure you check those out with the uh, with like a tape measure or a ruler just to make sure your distance is being measured correctly. So a little bit of quality assurance um, there by testing that out uh, with a real life measuring device. So uh, then we're gonna send an update. So let me back up. This gets the data, then this sends the data to the screen. So uh, make sure that 
uh, you put an update after you call the data and you decide your telemetry. So right now we have IMU telemetry being used in our op mode and we wanna switch to dis distance telemetry. So I'm gonna copy um, that function and then I'm gonna come up here to where I see IMU telemetry. I'm gonna put an enter right here and paste this in. Uh, and then I need to put my parentheses and a semicolon. And then on this line, I'm gonna push control forward slash and comment out IMU telemetry since I'm not using that anymore. And then I can do basically the same thing down here. Uh, I could go through the same process or in this instance, I'm gonna just copy and paste. So um, this again is after I push init, but I have not pushed play. So it's gonna display the telemetry during a knit, but while it's waiting for play. And then after I push play, it'll still display the same telemetry. So on the driver hub, you're not gonna see any difference because there's nothing else happening here except for the telemetry. So um, we've got that all set up. So the next thing that we wanna do is do a little trick of moving our servo. I'm just double checking real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we're all set up except for actually moving the servo. So I wanted to give an example of actually using a sensor. Um, with the IMU, we didn't really give any examples of that. Uh, to be honest, our team doesn't even use the IMU on our robot, um, but we use the distance sensor quite a bit. So uh, just to get students used to using the distance sensor to actually move something or do something, um, we add this into this particular lesson at this spot. So uh, what we wanna do is talk about our teleop controls right here. So I'm gonna copy this. And um, after our knits are done, um, we have, I wanna put this before telemetry, there we go. So after our knits and before our telemetry, we're gonna drop in our teleop controls. So teleop controls should be grayed out. I'm not sure why uh, those are gold. That's a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna um, copy this right here. I'm gonna come up and put our teleop controls. Once we push play, we want the servo to start moving. So I'm gonna put this right after, um, you know what, let's put it, let's put it uh, after our distance telemetry. So let's put it right there. And then I need my parentheses and uh, semicolon to, uh, to get that function call correctly notated. So um, we've got our distance telemetry being put on the driver hub, and then it's gonna use that telemetry to do something. So let's drop down here to teleop controls and talk about what it's actually doing. So we've used conditional statements before. Um, so this is an, if this is true, uh, do this code block right here. If it's not true, so else, um, do this code block, okay? So we've got a two-step conditional. If this is true, do the first part. If it's not true, do this no matter what, okay? So in this instance, we're taking the information that we're getting off the distance sensor. So that's the correct notation for that. So distance dot get distance, and then we need to tell it the unit. So that's inside the parentheses. So we're passing it a um, argument. And then we're comparing that, whatever that number is, if it's less than our target, you're gonna do this particular motion, okay? So um, what's our target distance? So again, this is in centimeters. So we set it to 10 centimeters. So if there's an object closer, less than, uh, whatever we read on the distance sensor compared to our target, then it's gonna execute this, um, this code. So that's gonna be position two, which we set to one, I believe. So position two is 100%. And then if not, it's gonna to go to position one, which I think we have a zero. Let me double check that. So that one's zero. So just so that you understand what's actually happening when you go through the run op mode, you're gonna push, um, you're gonna push init. It's gonna run through the hardware. It's gonna start displaying the telemetry. It's gonna wait for play. Let me back up actually a step. In the init hardware, it's going to 50%. So it's only going halfway through the motion. As soon as you push play, it's gonna start running this teleop control. So in the teleop controls, it's going to move to either position one, um, actually one's down here, or position two. So as soon as you push play, that servo will move the way that we have this set up in this op mode or in this example. 
okay? It's gonna move to position one if there's nothing inside that 10 centimeter distance. If, it's, uh, if something is within that 10 centimeters distance, it's gonna to move to position two. So we actually have three different spots where the servo would be, and you can play around with that, obviously, changing those settings to whatever you want them to be as you set this up on your own, okay? So I think that's pretty much it for this lesson. Uh, enjoy messing around with it. So we're starting to actually get a little functionality here to use our sensors with. Uh, in the next one, we're going to be talking about the color sensor. So if you're interested in that one, stick around. And I uh, hope you have a great day, and we'll catch you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.